women's that's the lemons and depending on the size of the batch it'll be anywhere from a couple hundred lemons to we've gone upwards of 2,000 lemons in a batch and uh, does your wife help with this I hope well no so I had um, <laughs> my assistant distiller was helping me for a while but then he decided he wanted to go into the National Guard so he's at boot camp right now and maybe it was a, it was a little extra motivation after he oh was my God having possessed so many lemons. Welcome back to the Whiskey Stop, everyone. We're very glad that you have joined us. Now, this time around, you had to cross the border to get yeah. to where you're going. We left Indiana. We went up to Michigan. I was a little concerned, you know. I'm not sure. I don't think I have any outstanding warrants there, but uh, we did get back as soon as we could, just in case. But I think I was okay. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. So where yeah. was it that you went to visit this uh, time? Went to Iron Shoe Distillery in okay. Niles, Michigan. Impressed with the building as soon, as soon as I got there. I mean, it was like, wow, I know where I am. Yeah. It was a building and... Um, a building that had been previously used as something else, another business. Uh, they did a great uh, job on it. So we'll take a look at that then. Yep, we will. All right, cool. Here we are, Iron Shoe Distillery, Niles, Michigan. This is going to be fun. It's a small craft distillery. Let's go inside, check it out. Iron Shoe Distillery made its home in a building formerly used as a muffler shop and later a gas station. In addition to distilling spirits, Iron Shoe is serving up some truly delicious eats and cocktails in its restaurant and outdoor patio. This is Howard Tuthill, owner, operator, and distiller at the family-owned Iron Shoe Distillery. Yeah, this is actually my second distillery. I started one um, back in Colorado, where I'm from, and started that up from you know ground up and got it going, and then sold it when we moved out here about three years ago. Um, I did start distilling here in this location about half a year before we opened to the public, mm -hmm. um, only because the city allowed me to start distilling before the build out in the dining room was finished. Right. So I tried to fill a few barrels and work out the kinks you know, early. Where did your interest in distilling come from originally in Colorado? I was not necessarily interested in just distilling, more of the, just the craft movement, you mm -hmm. know, craft, um, craft food, craft spirits, craft beer, craft wine, you know, locally made products. Um, I was going through my uh, MBA program and with a focus in entrepreneurship. And yeah. for my thesis, I had to write a business plan. And um, oh. so I wrote a business plan on a distillery and um, I thought it was a good idea and submitted it to a couple um, different business plan competitions mm -hmm. and it did really well. So I thought, all right, well, not only do I think it's a good idea, but other people who have no interest in it right. think it's a good idea. So um, I graduated and decided to make it a reality. You know, when I made the business plan, I didn't really know anything about distilling. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until um, I really thought, you know, it's a, a viable option that I started learning what distilling is. And so, um, you know, there's classes and workshops out there that I took and I found a couple of distilleries that essentially let me work for free for uh, periods of time. And it's a great way to work. That's how I yeah. figured it out and learned on the way. Yeah. Right a lot. You distill a lot of different products here too. Get, can you kind of give us a lineup? It's not just your whiskeys, but uh, right. you've, got a, you've got a good line of uh, different products. Yeah, so kind of our base products are um, vodka, white rum, amber rum, um, bourbon cream liqueur. 
I do a limoncello, which is like an Italian lemon liqueur. Right. That's probably our most popular product. Great for the summer months, especially. Yep, and when it's really cold and dreary in the winter, yeah. it makes you think oh. it's summer. Let's yeah. let's face it, it's good in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, orange cello, mm -hmm. um, and then I do a bunch of different whiskeys. So it's all small batch whiskeys. Each barrel I fill, I do a different type of whiskey. And it's kind of just whatever I'm feeling like at that time is the, the type right. of whiskey I'll make. Up until now, I've had three different bourbon releases. And you did with different grains, too. What are some of the different grains you, you use? Yeah, so the first bourbon was a four-grain bourbon. I used corn, obviously, uh, rye, barley, and then a chocolate malt. So oh, really? it had a slight chocolate flavor mm -hmm. to it, which I think complemented the rye really well. Um, and then a three grain, which was just corn, barley, and rye, and then a two grain, corn and barley, and then now the, the straight oh, rye. My system is big enough that I can, you know, crank out quite a bit of product, but at mm -hmm. the same time, I can experiment and try different things, and if they work, that's great. If not, it's not, not the end of the world. Right, yeah, you go on to the next one. Turn it into vodka. Yeah, <laughs> turn it into vodka. There you go. When the governor first issued the you know, the shutdown, Right. Um, we opted to not do carry out at the beginning. So we shut down the distillery completely. Mm -hmm. um, but then kind of overnight, the whole hand sanitizer thing came about. Well, you couldn't find it on the shelves. Anyway. Couldn't find it anywhere. And um, I figured out that, you know, we could make it like all distilleries did. About a month and a half, two months there, we were literally 24 seven production Get really? sanitizer, yeah. Around the clock. <laughs> yep. Um, and in terms of the recipients, it was mostly um, businesses. Actually, we had a bunch of uh, farmers because that was around the time when all the migrant oh um, migrant workers were, were coming in. in. So, you know, some of these farms in the area overnight were having 100 people from all yeah. over the world showing up at their so doorsteps. So you they need a lot of hand sanitizer. They needed hand sanitizer, yeah. yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, but I mean, geez, we had people driving four hours from Ohio. To come that, pick up. Do you feel caught up with that at the time? Yeah, I mean, now two months, it was kind of gangbusters, and then the, the big producers, you know, caught up, caught up and yeah. they kind of slowed down from yeah. there. If I'm eating into a restaurant here, you guys do a lot more of cocktails and different uh, specialty drinks, do you not? Yeah, of course. So it's all craft cocktails that we make, um, you know, handmade juices, syrups. Um, we do, we have our on tap, which um, they're empty right now, but uh, these were last week's uh, flavors, but my bar manager every week, he comes up with different infusions. We have like seven or eight of them and, you know, I mean, strawberry, peanut butter, rum, <laughs> Oreo, marshmallow, Oreo cream, that kind of stuff. And those are super popular. We have both inside and outside dining. Um, we have the big garage doors in the dining room, so as long as it's not too hot outside, we'll open that up. Oh, you do! I like that. Inside, a nice yeah. airy feel. And I mean, our primary um, offerings are burgers, right? But uh huh. I saw that on on your website too, and they look awesome. Yeah, they're yeah. they're great, but fun combinations that we come up with. We're gonna got a lot of food and a lot of booze here. And yeah. Well, I'd love to see part of the operation, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Howard, tell me a little bit about uh, where we are right now, and what was this building once upon a time? Yeah, so this is the distillery in here, and this was once a, a muffler shop, and before that it was a Sunoco, if I said that correctly, gas station. So I think it, the building itself was built in the 50s, maybe earlier than that, and, um, and then, yeah, we converted it into the distillery. Well, I know we all needed mufflers and whatever, but I like distilleries even more. There will yeah. be people that come in, you know, our customers, and they're like, oh, the last time I was in this building, my car was getting service <laughs> in, in Bay 3 and all this. Yeah, or so-and-so's dad used to work here. And that's kind of cool, so, isn't it? Yeah, it I is like neat. that. Yeah. yeah, it's got a history with some of the people here in town. Though. Definitely. Yeah. Everything I make, I make here in-house. I don't bring any bulk spirits in from outside of the distillery. Okay. Uh, it's a true... Grain to glass, grain to bottle, however okay. you want to call it. Operation. I like that. Yep. Absolutely. Sure. Um, so mash tank, um, mash there, and then we ferment in the the totes that are on the rack right there. Oh, okay. And then, um, then yeah, this is a 250 gallon hybrid pot still with the vodka column, and so really I can make just about anything I want in here. Um, I don't have a gin basket, so. I don't make gin because okay. 
that'd be a nightmare to clean. That's another. That's yeah. a whole other, a whole other deal. There. Yeah. So how many, how many gallons did you say here? Two hundred and fifty. Two hundred and fifty. Yep. So you just change up what you need, what's moving, and exactly whatever what I you're do. doing in here. Bypass, you know, at each sight glass, there's a um, bubble plate, so I can bypass it and run as many or as few as I want. None at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can bypass the, the vodka column as well. And it's so, constantly learning. There, you know, it seems like almost every batch I make, I learn something different. So, yeah. um, not to get into too much detail, I actually because of the hand sanitizer, I revamped my whole process of distilling the vodka, uh -huh. um, which kind of completely changed the product, um, and. It was just an aha moment, and I liked it and ran with it. So, yeah. you know, it's always something new. This, well, you don't this size um, equipment, I can, I mean, I'm nowhere near capacity. I can, I can ramp still, there's still room to grow here. So I'm definitely looking to add um, second, third locations for the oh, okay. distillery and restaurant. It's nice in Michigan, my liquor license covers me for, I think right now it's six different locations. Oh, you're so, all set. So the, fu the future, if you want to expand, it's there for you. Exactly. Yeah. The you know the biggest thing is just the uh, room for barrel storage and um, right. ferment fermenters. So what shall we try? All right. So this is a lemoncello. He hands us the lemons, and depending on the size of the batch, it'll be anywhere from a couple hundred lemons to we've gotten upwards of two thousand lemons in a batch. And, uh, does your wife help with this? I hope. Well, no. So I had, um, <laughs> my assistant distiller was helping me for a while, but then he decided he wanted to go into the national guard. So he's at boot camp right now. And maybe <laughs> the, it was a little extra motivation after he oh was my gosh. having to zest so many lemons, but, uh, but yeah, so we zest the lemons. It's really important. You only get the, the yellow part of the zest because the, the white pith will give it a bitter flavor. Ooh, that's really. That's really good. When people when people enjoy a lemoncello, do they do they drink it neat? Do they pour it over over ice, or it just depends on how you enjoy it. So it's traditionally served serve chilled, um, and like I'll just keep a bottle in my freezer. Uh, it's thirty percent, thirty five percent alcohol, so it won't it won't freeze. It won't freeze, and okay. for a liqueur, actually, it's a little bit stronger than you'll usually find. They're typically a little lower proof. Um, but yeah, just it's kind of a what is it an aperitif? Yeah, they call right. it, and they drink it after dinner, and that's I. I'd give you three thumbs up if I had one more All thumb. Right. That's that like that beer. that is that is absolutely I'd right. say that too. Now, do you make? Is there a mixed drink you make with these? Um, the the lemon cello we do is we call it the sunshine cup. It's actually just flavored lemonade. So, oh, okay. Um, so have, somebody at home, if they bought a bottle, could replicate that in a fashion too. Yeah, so we actually, um, we sell cocktail kits where we'll give you the bottle, the simple syrups, you can choose your flavor. So if you want peach, blackberry, blueberry, pomegranate, whatever it is, and the lemonade, and then we have a recipe card that comes with it. So wow. you can make it all yourself. So you make you make a kit for it. I like exactly. that. It's a yeah. kit to go. I like that. That was a, that was a great idea. The orange, the orange cello, which you're going to try now. So okay. same idea. We hand zest all the oranges. Um, this I do more seasonally. So like over the winter, I didn't, um, right. I didn't produce any. We just uh, released it this summer. I mean, people love the, the orange. Ooh, I like that too. Wow. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Now this yeah, looks interesting. So this is a um, bourbon cream liqueur. So okay. similar to um, Bailey's. Oh yeah, you could drink that all day. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, I'm not sure if I'd make it all day oh, drinking yeah. it, but, but I'd give it a good shot. Yeah, that's just that's just nice the way it is. And yep. that's, that's awfully good chill too. Just, isn't it? just on the rocks. Yeah. And our graphic design. Guys, they actually were here yesterday. They're out of Grand Rapids, and they told me they just won a, an award in um, for Michigan advertisers or something like that. Where'd you find your graphic people? Just online. Just search, online? Yeah, searching for them. But um, for this bottle, they won a big award, so that's pretty cool for their design work. And it's kind of, so Fifth Horseman, you 
Notre Dame, Four right. Horsemen, kind of. Iron Shoes. So it's based off of the kind of symbolism and the mythology of the the horseshoe, okay. um, where the the legend goes that um, Saint Dunstan he um, he captured the devil and he put a horseshoe on him, and then that's why people put the horseshoes above their door. Oh, for good luck and to keep the the bad spirits out. So it lets in the good spirits, keeps the bad spirits out. So playing off the spirits, you know. I'm shopping for horseshoes when I get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's 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 awesome, and I love and I love that bottle. Too. Love to, I'd love to try your your rye. The rye? Yeah. And like you say, like, rye's really coming into its own these days. I think the last year or two, you hear more people talking about rye, and I think they're. There's more rye being distilled than what there used to be. So this is now in your rye, your mash bill in the rye, you're like, you said 75% rye and... 75% just raw, straight rye flour, and then 25% malted rye. Ooh, I like that. That says hi to you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's yeah. got the spiciness from mm -hmm. the, the raw rye, and then you get kind of that mellowness and smoothness from the malted. That's, right. That's excellent. That'd make a good cocktail, too, because that would punch you. Yeah, Manhattan, old-fashioned. Old-fashioned, yeah, we talk. Those are my two favorite drinks there. That's it. And that's really a pretty easy-to-drink rye you have here, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it's, it's a good easy. introduction to rye. It's not it's not too punchy, but you know you're drinking a rye. Yep. And the malted rye really helps keep it in check, there too, I think. Yeah. yeah. I've got a, uh, a high rye bourbon coming up here pretty soon. Um, where I did 51% corn, 49% okay. rye. So when you make the spirit initially coming off the still, you have a good idea if it's going to be, you know, drinkable, if, if it's right. good. But it changes so much when it's in the barrel. And, and you don't you know what wait. the barrel's going to do to it. Exactly, and you have to wait a long time. So, yeah. you know, it's pretty risky to put all your cards in one you know, Time, one time is the one thing that's just really, you can't do anything much about that, right. really. A smaller barrel will help you compress your time, those that understand the exactly. ratio of, of your distillate, of your white dog or whatever you want to call it in there, but but it's just, you need time. Okay, so that was a pretty neat place and lots of great stuff in the restaurant going on. They got a cool bar there also, mm -hmm. and I know they said that they're finally kind of able to open up again and, and start to have some of that outdoor seating also. What's so, And what's neat uh, with the, with their uh, eating area there, that there's big big garage doors, you know, glass mm -hmm. garage doors that open up. So you get to, even if you're eating or dining inside, you feel like you're outside. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they've got a great eating area. And speaking of that, they're going to have it upstairs too eventually. Put a patio on the roof there. That's so. right. Which That's cool. and and take it from us, uh, you're going to get a good view up there if you get a chance to yeah. do that when that comes to fruition. So ah. and it will fruition. Yeah, yeah I use there, that so. word. You know, use that word ten times and it's yours. Very cromulent words. So. It is. It's yeah. totally cromulent. So we need to try something, that shouldn't yeah. we? Uh, and this was just coming out uh, when we were visiting there, and this is their rye. They're right, yep. which is, uh, and not to be confused, it is actually in a bourbon bottle right now, and that's simply because we're getting a little bit of a sneak pre uh, peek. So this has not yep. been officially released yet. By the time you're watching this video, it may be. Contact Iron Shoe directly to see mm -hmm. if they have this rye yet. Um, that phone number was uh, right right before this little segment here, so make sure to check that out. But we're going to go ahead and have some of that. Right. Yeah, we got there just in time to try the ride, yeah. didn't we? Perfect. Yeah. So they're still waiting on labels and whatever, but uh, as you watch this, it may be available. So we like rye. Rye not. Rye not. He's beat me to that. So we'll try it out. Now, what I like about rye or any bourbons, they, they all differ from each other. They oh, yeah. all got their own little thing that the other guy may not have. I always love that aroma. Really you know, like sweet nose. Rise, mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see if this has anything that other rice don't put forth. I get a little punch of the rye there. You do? Yeah. Yeah. On the back half of it. Now, I'd say a little bit interesting profile. I almost get a bit of a licorice hit on that. And see, you're not wrong with that. And... From what I understand, some rye and bourbons will give you a little bit of that. This is the first time I've ever actually gotten any licorice off anything I've 
tasted before. Maybe I just good. haven't been aware of it and tasted for it. But. Well, everyone's uh, palate is a little bit different, so what you pick up uh, is not necessarily what someone else might too, but I like that. That is very unique. I, I would recognize that solely as a iron shoe uh, taste there. Yeah, and if, you, if you're not accustomed to rise, and they scare some people because they say, oh, it's just too forward, it's too much, uh, I think this is pretty easy going on the front end. Yep. So Agreed. I don't think this one would scare you off if you want to explore the world of rise. This would be a great way to do it. Don't, I like it. Don't be scared. Yeah, don't be scared. Don't, don't, don't be scared. It won't hurt you. So be brave out there, and uh, until next time, please check us out on social media at The Whiskey Stop. And uh, we look forward to uh, having a, another pour with you next time. You betcha. And cheers.